From left Paul A. Slew Dustin L. Hurt Evan S. Liberty Nicholas A. Slatton. From left Douglas C. Pazak Associated Press Jose Luis Magana Associated Press Cliff Wynn Associated Press Cliff Wynn Associated Press Washington, a federal appeals court on Friday threw out lengthy prison sentence for three former Blackwater Worldwide security contractors and ordered a new trial for a fourth involved in a deadly 2007 shooting in Baghdad that became a symbol of unchecked, freewheeling American power in Iraq. The shooting killed or injured at least 31 civilians when contractors unleashed a torrent of machine gun fire and launched grenades into a crowded downtown Baghdad traffic circle from their heavily armored trucks. An FBI agent once called it the My Lai Massacre of Iraq. The ruling is a setback to the effort, which now stretches across three presidential administrations, to demand stiff consequences for the shooting in Baghdad's Nisor Square. Along with the massacre by Marines of 24 Iraqi civilians at Hadidah and the abuses of Iraqi prisoners at Abu Ghraib prison, it was among the war's darkest moments and stained the reputation of the United States. Three of the contractors, Dustin L. Hurd, Evan S. Liberty and Paul A. Slew, were convicted in 2014 of voluntary manslaughter and using a machine gun to carry out a violent crime. They were sentenced to 30 years in prison, a mandatory sentence on the machine gun charge. A fourth, Nicholas A. Slatton, a sniper who the government said fired the first shots, was convicted of murder and received a life sentence. Defense lawyers argued that the convoy was under fire from insurgents, a claim that prosecutors denied and Iraqi witnesses rejected. The Nisor Square shooting forced a reconsideration of America's reliance on contractors in war zones. Until then, no security contractor was more powerful than Blackwater in the post-Sept 11 conflicts. Its employees protected American diplomats overseas and worked alongside CIA officers in clandestine counterterrorism operations. The company won more than $1 billion in contracts. Its founder, Eric Prince, has advised the Trump administration, encouraging it to use more private contractors in Afghanistan. The machine gun charge in the Iraq case was always contentious, even inside the Justice Department. Agents had pushed hard to include the charges. How do we go back there, and face a room full of crippled Iraqis and family members of the deceased, and tell them the U.S. DOJ decided that they didnt want to go too hard on the men who shot everyone that day? John Paterini, an FBI agent wrote in a 2008 email as authorities debated the charges. The Justice Department ultimately acquiesced, although some prosecutors believed it was unfair to add an extra penalty for using a weapon that the United States government required them to carry. The appeals court agreed. The three-judge panel ruled that the machine gun law was intended to punish people who intentionally brought dangerous weapons with them to carry out violent crimes, and declared the contractor's sentences grossly disproportionate to their culpability for using government-issued weapons in a war zone. The court ordered that three of the contractors be resentenced, a ruling that could significantly reduce their prison terms. Mr. Slatton's conviction was thrown out entirely. Prosecutors had successfully argued that he touched off the killings with a precision shot through the head of a driver of a stopped white Kia as the Blackwater convoy moved through the traffic circle. The Justice Department said Mr. Slatton hated Iraqis and opened fire as part of payback for 911. But the appeals court ruled that he never should have been prosecuted in the same trial. As his colleagues, one of whom said he, and not Mr. Slatton, fired the first shots. The government's case against Slatton hinged on his having fired the first shots, his animosity toward the Iraqis having led him to target the white Kia unprovoked, the court wrote. The co-defendant's statements, however, strike at the heart of that theory. By overturning his conviction, the court has forced the Trump administration to decide whether to re-prosecute a case that began under President George W. Bush. The Nisor Square shooting strained diplomatic relations between Washington and Baghdad. The Bush administration refused to allow the contractors to be prosecuted in an Iraqi court, and implored angry and skeptical Iraqis to trust the American criminal justice system. William Miller, a spokesman for the United States Attorney in Washington, said prosecutors were reviewing the opinion and had no additional comment on Friday. The ruling was the latest in a series of setbacks in the Nisor Square case, some of the government's own making. Charges against one contractor were dropped in 2013 because of a lack of evidence. And, in an error that an earlier appeals court called inexplicable, the Justice Department missed a filing deadline and inadvertently let the statute of limitations expire against Mr. Slatton, who had been charged with manslaughter. That error forced prosecutors to charge Mr. Slatton with murder, which has no statute of limitations. Retrying Mr. Slatton will not be easy. Prosecutors tracked down dozens of Iraqi witnesses and flew them to Washington for the first trial and would probably have to do so again.
and the evidence against the group was stronger than the evidence against Mr. Slatin alone. If the Trump administration does not try him again, he will walk free. Mr. Slatin's lawyer had no comment. At their sentencing, the contractors predicted they would ultimately be exonerated. The verdict is wrong, Mr. Slatin told the judge. You know I am innocent, sir, the four former Blackwater contractors had asked the court to overturn the convictions entirely, arguing that the Justice Department had no jurisdiction to bring charges for possible crimes committed in Iraq. Federal law gives the Justice Department the ability to bring charges against contractors traveling with or supporting the mission of the Defense Department. Lawyers for the defendants argued that, as State Department contractors, the Blackwater Guards were not covered by that law. The court disagreed. After a series of congressional inquiries into Blackwater's conduct, Mr. Prince ultimately sold the company. It has had several name changes and reorganizations since then and exists now as Academy, a subsidiary of the Constellate Group. A version of this article appears in print on August 5, 2017, on page A9 of the New York edition with the headline Blackwater case sentences and a conviction are tossed.